um, just for a day sail today. Um, it's another extremely hot day uh, in the UK. We're kind of moving into official drought mode now. Um, I think the Southwest has, uh, has just announced it's, uh, it's in drought mode, um, if that's what you can call it. Um, but yeah, we've uh, not seen much rain at all here for quite a few weeks now. It's been the odd shower, but um, yeah, very rare and not much at all. Um, so, uh, it's a Friday, I've taken the day off work and uh, I'm just going to go for a sail about. It's not normally the temperature I like to sail in because it's just ridiculously hot. Um, and I'd usually be sitting at anchor somewhere having a beer or uh, swimming, but uh, there's not going to be many days um, available like this, um, so I'm just going to make the most of it. So yeah, I've just got on board. Um, just a little tip: if you've got like a pack sail like this, um, what I tend to do—I mean, it's not there's not too much wind this time of year—but these these can um, you know release and, and find themselves free, and you end up with uh, with your, your you know your mainsail pack coming off. So I tend to just get a small bit of uh, what's this paracord and just um, just secure it along along the top, um, wrap it once round, and then bring it back on itself. Um, so yeah, it just, just keeps it a little bit more secure um, and basically saves the pack itself from getting ripped off and getting punctured or what have you ended up in the water. So yeah, just a small tip. These aren't always that great. These Velcro straps, they will work themselves free in a, in a stronger wind. So uh, this is just keeps things together really. Just, uh, oh, so I've just fallen over. Um, these, by the way, are easily one of the most expensive pair of sunglasses I've ever bought. They're um, they're gill, um, and um, they are polarized. And I'm glad I spent the money I did on them because uh, I think on days like today, um, when you've got a lot of sun coming off the water, you get like a double sun effect. And I have found before. Um, going out for day sails or trips or whatever that after a full day at sea I can literally I'm walking around and it feels like my eyeballs have been bleached so yeah um, hopefully these will um, sort of protect my eyeballs if you like Really any good for sailors these bloody things especially when they're blocking the wind <laughs> you can just make out where the wind starts to pick up again just look at the water and then I hope the tide doesn't take you back <laughs> seven knots of wind and this trimaran is easily doing ten knots
So, I've been on Port Tac for a while, and uh, I, I know I've got a leak somewhere on the starboard bulkhead. Um, I'll show you what's going on. So this is the situation as it kind of presents itself. Um, when I'm on this starboard tack, I'm getting a lot of water, as you can see, uh, just sitting here. And then, of course, as soon as I change tack, um, excuse me, uh, it goes everywhere into the cabin. So as you can see, I'm hard, quite hard over at the minute. So I've just been trying to find where the heck this water's been coming from. But my thoughts are that it's coming out of this little plug hole here. So that's the bolt for the beaching unit to go straight through the hole. Um, but I just cannot see how all this water came through. Maybe a slightly not quite fully done up uh, bolt. So uh, I'm going to clean this water up and then uh, maybe Hopefully I can see where the run is. It really is quite frustrating because I can't see any obvious signs at the minute. Even when I'm hard over like this. That is quite a lot of water. I've only been at sea and sailing like this for about half an hour now. So yeah, need to find out what's going on here. Just gone about. Um, I want to. I've tried to tighten up this um, this bolt from the inside, uh, and it seems to have stopped the, 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 you know, the leakage rate. I think what's happening is coming in from the outside and it's dispersing inside the support block, and it's kind of trickling its way behind bits of fiberglass um, in the, inside the hull. Um, so I'm going to go in, and I'm just going to inspect the, the nut or the bolt sorry from the outside just check what condition the um there is a like a rubber o-ring uh, so i'll have a look and, and see what's uh what the condition is of that um i might even take the bolt out and just inspect the inside of the hull but obviously i can't do it at the minute so i'll uh, i'll head back into the river uh, more up somewhere and have a have a better look Um, this is the inside um, bolt which I was talking about earlier so what I've done is I've removed the nut and uh, I'm gonna remove the bolt from the outside and check to see what is going on in there um, and see if I can seal up some of this water that's going in I've got some gunk I've got some silicon like kind of um, marine silicon that I'm gonna uh, use if the um, if the seal is done. I'm just going to fill the hole full and then uh, and then see how we go.
so um yeah this is the job for the afternoon really it's uh, really hot out there um about 25 degrees so uh, i'm going to try and make this sort of quick as possible because uh i have got a crate of beer in the uh, cockpit and um yeah i don't want it to warm up too much i was uh as best i can i supported this uh bolt with uh, some marine um silicon um don't know how long that's gonna hold out for um hopefully until the winter and then i can maybe do a maybe do a fill of that area um i've also uh i've also just put some around the edge here sort of like temporarily it's not the best job because usually the better thing would be to like bring these up and then um yeah fill that in with some like um non-setting sort of compound just to properly uh, make it watertight um, and then the other thing I've just started sort of having a look at is um, how about lifting this up um, it may be letting in water I'm not sure never had issues with it previously but it may suddenly start start letting in um, when it's down this side and the water's filling in so uh, I'm going to need a bit of a power tool there to cut the bolts off from the under in the cabin where the bolts go through because um, they're covered in paint and all sorts of stuff so the best way is just to yeah hack them off with a multi-tool or something and then unscrew them through the top and just lift this track off um, and seal it up completely I don't think I'm going to use it anymore anyway so uh, I'll do that on this side and that side it's, um, it's probably best and then that'll, that'll sort of reduce the amount of entries into the hull on this side of the deck so hopefully um, I can then uh, I can then have a dry tack because the amount of water I'm seeing coming in is ridiculous really and um, the only other thing is that it's behind here on the gunnel on the join the deck join um, which would mean removing the uh, the rubbing strake and then getting behind it but hey ho all the fun of owning a boat always a leak to find. Now as picturesque as it is at Pin Mill, um, got the low tide situation and uh, I'm gonna get muddy feet just as well I bought my wellies. Right, here we go then, grab my rope. Oh, this is going to be extremely bloody deep. Oh, shit. Great. Come on, you bastard. Oh, that stinks. Ah, so there's the hard bit. Oh, mission success. I actually got it. Ha, ha, ha.